Welcome everybody to another episode of Get Happy Outdoors. I hope you guys are all having a great year so far and finding lots of sheds. I know it's been difficult with all the people, uh, the extra people that are in the woods right now. I mean, honestly, I'm seeing about 10 times more shed hunters this year than I did last year. And uh, I will grant you, a, uh, there is a, a, a percentage of those uh, who are the kids the high school kids who don't have school right now because of the coronavirus so they're supposed to be homeschooling but they're actually out here shed hunting which is awesome i mean it's more competition for the rest of us but hey i i don't love anything more than to see the next generation get into the outdoors especially shed hunting fishing everything like that so it's, I'm super stoked about it. I mean, there's a lot more competition because of them, but uh, you know, it's, it's great to see them out here. I love seeing the next generation get into shed hunting. It's just such a super sport, so, uh, a super fun thing for everybody to learn. Uh, you just imagine the education that they're getting from this. I mean, it tops anything they're gonna learn from their schools, right? <laughs> so anyways, we're in an area right now. Uh, I, took an, I took a day off, basically. So I'm doing a real easy hike today uh, because yesterday we went up that huge, huge mountain and we found those three, sh three brownies in one day. That, that was a fantastic day, by the way, in my book. But anyways, uh, so my feet are really, really sore. I've got plenty of energy left, so I figured I got to get out and hike at least. So I'm just hiking in a real easy area that's not going to hurt my feet too much. And this area has been hit super, super hard already. It gets hit super hard every year by shed hunters because there is so much elk activity in here. Lots of bulls in this area, uh, and there's a lot of shed activity in this area. And it's not far from a dirt road either. I mean, I'm only a mile in, that's it. And it's really easy hiking back here. It's not a lot of steep ridges and all that stuff to go through. So a lot of shed hunters come in here and pick it, pick it clean, but they don't get all of them, right? That's what we always say, they can't get them all. Well, they get most of them, yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna take you guys through a few of the things that I do when I know I'm in an area that's been hit hard by a lot of other shed hunters, but also has a lot of shed activity, uh, which means that you know there's usually going to be a shed or two that they don't find because they didn't do a certain thing or they didn't go a certain spot. So uh, first off, um, let's just walk around here a little bit and show you what we're into. You can see this shed activity right here. <laughs> wow. We've got elk tracks coming down, bull tracks. You can see boot prints right there already from somebody else who followed those elk tracks. So we know there's a lot of shed hunters in here. They followed probably every bull track there is. Uh, well, not everyone, but most of them. But we're going to try to find sheds in here using a few different tactics than we usually would. Look at that activity, wow. Nice rub right there. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. So a few of the tactics that I'm gonna use when I'm shed hunting in an area I know a lot of people have been in is uh, I'm gonna stay in elk sign and uh, I'm gonna go off of it just a little bit, you know, 40, 50 yards off of elk sign, away from where I'm seeing more patches of elk sign and stuff like that. I'll go to places that are about 50, 60 yards away from that, uh, just on the outskirts, like the borders and stuff like that, see if there were any straggler bulls that were on the outskirts. So I'll hit that stuff. Most of that won't have been hit by, won't, will not have been hit by other shed hunters. So there's one way I find sheds. Another way is, uh, I get into uh, this mahogany stuff. I walk right through the middle of it. When there are paths on both sides, there's a path here, there's a path above it. I'll walk right through the middle of this stuff. I'll get all scratched up and everything. I know it's gonna happen, but there will oftentimes be a shed in here that just blends in with it and you can't quite see it until you actually step into it. So you can't see it from the trails, but once you step through it, you can see it. So a big thing that I do is I go where most people don't want to go, but I still see elk sign there. That's one thing. 
And what most people don't want to do is get all scratched up and uh, trip over logs and stuff like that. So those are spots where most shed hunters are not going to be going. They're not going to want to duck under trees like I'm doing here. Like when I hit these branches. But the elk do. So that's how I'll oftentimes find sheds in really hard hit areas. So as we're walking through here, guys, we're going to go through stuff like this. It's got elk sign right there. We know a bull has passed through here, but because of these branches, most people aren't going to go through here. They're going to take the easy way over to, you know, 10 yards to the right or to the left. But right here is where you got to go. In addition to that, I'll go straight up the mountain up here. I'll go up into that steep stuff that's up above that nobody else wants to go up because it's just too steep, too much mahogany, too hard to hike through. You get scratched up like crazy and we'll see what we can find up there. So those are a few tips uh, for what I like to do when I'm in a really hard hit area, but there's just so much elk sign that it doesn't even really matter if I find a shed or not. I just love being surrounded by all the elk sign. No matter what happens, there's always something to learn. And that's the awesome thing about being outdoors. You can always come out, come out of the woods having learned something new. And I love that. So it's one of my favorite parts about shed hunting and uh, getting outdoors. So we're going to turn you back on here a little bit, uh, let you know how we're doing. We might get skunked today, we might not, but no matter what, we're gonna learn something. So stay tuned guys, and get happy outdoors. All right guys, so we're still, uh, we're still hiking around in that area with uh, all the people tracks and all the sign down there. Um, wasn't finding anything down there. Uh, we took a few fingers and gullies and stuff like that that uh, didn't seem like there was a whole lot of boot tracks going through. But uh, a lot of elk sign everywhere down there. So basically, as you can see here, there's a road right there that I'm not far from. And that's, that's why it's hit so hard in here, because it's so close to that road. It's so easy hiking in all through this area right here. These elk are hanging out in a really easy hiking area. And that's why it gets hit really hard. But because there's so many, so many elk and bulls and, and elk sign in there, it's just hard not to keep hitting it. <laughs> so people will come back and come back and come back and keep hitting it and hitting it. So basically what I do now is when I'm in an area like this that's hit, hit a lot, uh, once I've gone through a lot of that down there, and I'm pretty sure that I've hit a lot of stuff that most people haven't hit yet, whether I found anything or not, uh, then I will think to myself, okay, what happens when you have uh, those early shit hunters, we'll call them premature shit hunters. I like that better, premature. They're not quite mature enough to respect the animals, uh, so they don't wait to come in here. All they're wanting to do is beat the first person to the antler, uh, that kind of thing. So we'll call them premature shit hunters, those early shit hunters that get in too early. And what I'm talking about is those guys that get in here when the elk are just about to drop, but they're not. They're still carrying. So if you're outdoors a lot, and you're obviously watching the shed hunting channels, uh, you're obviously a hunter, an outdoorsman, a shed hunter. And when you're in elk country and uh, elk are at the base of a mountain, like right here, uh, and you got flats out, up, out to the, the outside there, just rolling hills in the area that they're hanging around at, but a, a mountain that just really steep goes way up uh, right behind them. What do elk usually do when you spook them in an area like this? We all know the, we all know the answer. They run straight up the mountain, don't they? More times than not, they'll go straight up that mountain. They won't go out into the open stuff. They won't just follow the rolling hills. They'll go straight up the mountain when you spook. So those premature shed hunters, 
that come in here while they're still packing, while the elk are still packing their antlers, they chase the elk, they chase the elk straight up the mountain where there's not a lot of sign. All the sign is down here. So why, why might I find an antler up this steep mountain? Because of those premature shit hunters. So that's what motivates me to climb this steep son of a gun right here. So my motivation is that uh, that's just one of the reasons, obviously. I mean, uh, I'm not saying that the only reason they're ever going to go up here is because some you know, premature shit hunter spooked them. I'm not saying that, guys. Read between the lines, okay? <laughs> but, uh, no, so that's, that's my motivation, is knowing that when elk do get spooked, they tend to run straight up the mountain. They don't run sideways or out into the open and stuff like that. So that's why I think I might have a good chance of finding something up there when there's so much sign right here at the base of it, but also so many people tracks. Also, I'm thinking to myself, well, not many people are going to want to climb this sucker, right? <laughs> so there's probably not a lot of boot tracks up here, if any. And my odds are probably going to be a lot better. So I'm not going to find the easy ones, but I'm not in it for the easy ones. I like the challenge. I like the experience. So if I had to work hard for one, that just makes me uh, enjoy it that much more. So let's see what we find, guys. All right. It's getting chilly up here. I might throw a jacket on while I'm climbing this thing. Got a lot of wind hitting me now. Whew. Well, we're on this really steep slope of this mountain here. Followed it all the way down to this little tiny saddle that's over here. I was really hoping that there might be something there, but there wasn't. And as I'm coming back, about here, take a look at that. Oh yeah, that's an elk antler. Old chalker. Just right up the mahogany side of this hill or mountain <laughs> uh, but that's an old one let's check it out uh. nice Oh. Well, at least we got something here. <laughs> oh, oh, these sticker bushes. Oh. <laughs> wow, short and stubby, but uh, stout. Missing his uh, first point there. Something kind of weird happened there. <laughs> Heavy though. It's got to be a good six pounds as a chalk. <laughs> there you go, guys. Hey guys, I'm back. Woohoo! Alright. So you guys saw the chalky that we found. That was awesome. Just like I explained. Go up the hill, up the mountain, uh, the steep side of the mountain where the elk would be spooked to run to. Uh, and you're likely to find 
a couple of thrown off antlers on the way up the mountain. So that's what that chalky was from. And obviously you find unknown sh uh, elk trails that, uh, that go along the, the side of the mountain parallel to the mountain as well up there. I mean, stuff that you just, you wouldn't know was there if you didn't go explore it. So I'm still straight above that really hard hit area down there. I'm just, I just kept going straight up the mountain all the way up and I just finally reached the very edge of the ridge top. All right, and it's gonna keep going a little bit further and further. There's a little bit of a shelf right here and those are what I look for. I look for shelves. Uh, I look for high trails uh, that are pretty much uh, been so beaten down that they're leveled, uh, leveled out a little bit and uh, there's a lot of bedding areas uh, on them, a lot of trees that they can bed under. So anyways, uh, these ridge tops obviously are some of my favorite stuff to hit. So when I go straight up a mountain, I'll keep going all the way up to the very top of it. And then I'll get on that ridge line and I'll start hitting it. Well, check this out, guys. I just stepped up, like I said, to the very edge of this ridge top. Just got to the very edge. Haven't even got into it yet. And I already see your first brownie right there. It looks like it's busted, though. I mean, busted at the third or right after the third. But it looks really, really heavy. God. So, uh, again, we're right above a really hard hit area. So, this is just uh, a few tips from Happy with Get Happy Outdoors on how to be successful shed hunting in an area that's already been hit super hard. And I'm not talking about just hit a little bit. That area has been hit super hard. Everybody, every local shed hunter within 30 miles knows of that spot. And they've all been there already. <laughs> but if you just go outside the boundaries of that area of where most of the humans are likely to go, remember humans uh, are most likely to travel uh, the way of least resistance. The elk, however, don't really find much resistance in anything that they're going through. <laughs> so that's why I continue on. And that's what we did today. So we've got that chalky stashed on the shelf way down there. I didn't want to carry it all the way up this mountain. And looky there. Looky there. Wow, what a thick. Whoa, man, that's a mature bull. <laughs> he is just. Thick. I can't believe he broke right there. Wow. Oh my goodness. That thing probably still weighs five or six pounds. I'm going to put you down for the a view of the pickup here. That's awesome. So not only are we still finding antlers, we found a chalky, but now we're finding a big, big brown whose match must be up here somewhere, I've got to imagine. Goodness, what a mature bull. Man. Oh, man. Look at that thing. So chocolatey. <laughs> oh, man. Can you believe he broke it off right there? Look at how thick that thing is. Man. Look at the base on that guy. Whew. Oh, yeah. That's a good six pounds still. Wow. Even without all this stuff, just imagine if he had all the rest of that, 12 pounder for sure. Look at, look at that little second point there. He messed it up during the velvet, it looks like. Oh, what a big bull. This is one that I'd like to find for sure. I'd like to find the other side to this guy. Hopefully it's intact. I can't believe that how much he broke off right there. Man, look at that. Look at that thing, jeez, what a monster. Oh boy. Whew. So yep, there you go guys. I think uh, we're gonna keep looking around obviously for more antlers, but uh, we'll go ahead and shut you off for a little bit here. Um, before I do that though, I think maybe I should probably clarify a little something about uh, my little comment on premature shed hunters. Um, 
maybe I should uh, tell you how how you know if you are a premature shed hunter or not. All right. So first of all, if uh, if you start early and finish early, <laughs> no, just <laughs> it does apply. But <laughs> so you know what I was <laughs> insinuating. Anyways, uh, no, uh, a premature shed hunter is one who doesn't respect the animals, one who doesn't know enough to respect the animals. So you're not maybe maybe you're not intentionally being disrespectful and stuff like that. And what I mean by that is. If you're going in there while the elk are shedding, there's two types of people that do that, all right? There's me, I go to observe the elk from a distance. I don't spook them, I make sure that my presence is not known. And there's a few other shed hunters out there that do this too. Probably ones that you, you watch already, I mean, and those are people that I'm talking about. Me, I get to know the elk that, I'm, that are in my area. Uh, that's why you'll see me say, oh, you know, I've got another year off of this bull, or I know this bull, that kind of thing. Uh, it's because we respect those animals when we go in there early uh, We want to watch them where they're shedding Okay, if we see their antler on the ground and they're right there in that spot still we don't go there We wait All right, we're gonna wait three four five days a week Whatever uh, until that animal has left that specific area. Maybe he's a couple of ridges away by that point Then we can go in there unnoticed unnoticed and pick that antler up nice and quiet and get up get back out all right uh, those those kind of people are ethical people okay uh, you gotta treat it like you're actually hunting all right when you get in there during the shed you you don't want to be known all right you don't want to yell woohoo and all that stuff all right so the premature shed hunter He's going to get in there and just start stomping the woods, completely disregarding the wildlife whatsoever. He's just stomp. He wants to be the first one to that antler. That's all he cares about. He doesn't care about the animals. Uh, when he gets to that antler, he yells and hoots and hollers and scares all the animals away. Uh, now, the bad part about that, guys, is that you're, uh, first of all, the elk have just dropped that antler, all right? It's going to take them about a week to get rid of the scabbing okay they're going to start puffing up and scabbing and while they're doing that that puts off a lot of scent right all right so the scabbing puts off a, a really really potent scent a smell for predators all right so you'll have coyotes bothering on them and then you, of course you're going to have the mountain lions attacking them all right and that's why there's two reasons that elk shed where they do there there's more than two but the two primary reasons that elk pick a particular shedding area number one is climate weather conditions you know how cold or how deep the snow is you know stuff like that they want to be just barely in the snow but you know close enough to where they can get out of the snow whenever they want to that kind of thing uh and number two is to be safe from predators okay we know that elk country is usually mountain lion country right it's usually the same, especially, you know, during, uh, you know, uh, fall and winter months and stuff like that. They're usually one and the same. All right. So why do elk come down out of mountain lion country to shed their antlers? Because they know when they shed, they're going to bleed. They're going to scab. They're going to really create a stench from that scabbing for about a week, a week or less. Usually it's pretty fast. Um, so what happens is if, if a premature shed hunter goes in there, grabs an antler that just been dropped one or two days ago, starts hooting and hollering, you know, man, sure, be happy, absolutely, but you don't be quiet. <laughs> so he starts hooting and hollering, he spooks that elk right up into lion country, because that's where the elk's habitat is. That's where the elk always want to go back to, is their lion country, uh, what their country, which is also lion country. So you spook the elk into lion country. Well, here's what happens, guys. Check it out. Well, here we have another dead shed bull. This is a fully mature bull. He had big bases on him. Eh, what a shame. Nobody will ever be able to hunt that bull, and nobody will ever be able to find another shed off that bull. If 
Finding a lot of dead shed bulls. Wow. This is a uh, good elk trail coming through the snow here. I came way far back again. I'm actually in the same area as I was last year when I came across that really big mountain lion that's an elk killer only. And, uh, well, looks like he did it again. Got another shed bull. Now the lion is not the bad guy. He's just doing what nature does. The people are at fault. Big shed bulls too. I mean, he's got some big bases on him. He was only grown maybe a week's worth of growth after he dropped his antlers. And, uh, yep, that's when he got him. These big bulls, boy, I tell you, you gotta be careful in this big lion country. But uh, this is a result of people spooking him back in here. So, we just gotta be careful, guys. Stop spooking the elk all around. You think that uh, you can be out there at the same time they shed. But uh, you can't. I mean, even if they've shed for a week, uh, they're still vulnerable. You know, that's scabbing on their uh, their new growth. Mountain lions smell that. And they come right to them. So if you're pushing them right into mountain lion country, then, well, this is what's going to happen. You're not going to find any more sheds off that bull. Period. So, and all I'm saying, guys, is use ethics. Uh, don't come pounding the woods uh, and yelling whenever you find an antler or something like that. Uh, that's what spooks the elk. Treat it like you're bow hunting, all right? If you're going to come out like a week or two after they drop their antlers, just treat it like you're actually hunting. You're, like you don't want the animals to know you're there. Stalk. Be quiet. Be observant. Look around. Uh, that's what I'm talking about, all right? I'm not talking about... Uh, you know, uh, just spooking them by doing that. I'm talking about the pounding around in, in the woods, the gritting and yelling every time you find an antler, that kind of stuff. That's what spooks these elk back into this mountain lion country. So, you know, we just got to be careful. That's all I'm saying, guys. You know, treat it like you're actually hunting, all right? That's, that's what I mean by ethics. All right. So I figured you needed a visual, all right? Instead of just talking about how bad it is to get in there and, and prematurely shed hunt. There's your visual, guys. Now you actually know the consequences of getting in there too early and being unethical and disrespecting the wildlife. So don't do it, all right? It's my obligation. I have a responsibility to at least bring this subject up and address it. Uh, because I am partially at fault for you being in the woods. I mean, I'm putting out videos that get you excited about going into the woods and finding sheds. <laughs> so I'm responsible for what you're doing. And so that tells me, for me, personally, I feel like I have not the obligation to at least address the issue and, uh, and try to prevent it as much as I can. But, all right, guys, I spent enough time talking about that. All right, but I really felt the need to elaborate on it and, uh, and just take responsibility for my actions by posting up these videos and getting you guys excited to do this kind of stuff. So, got to educate you too. I can't just let you go out there and do it. All right? So, until the next one, get happy outdoors. Ooh, ah. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, I'm just circling around a little bit, looking for the uh, the match to that uh, the big brown that we just found that was broken. And I don't know if you can tell or not. Looks like there's a raghorn antler right there, just 10 feet away from me. It's in such thick stuff, it's actually still kind of hard to tell if it's a raghorn or not. But I think it is. 
So I'm gonna bust my way in there, go just below it and come up the other side there. See if it is. All right, right behind that twig there. I'm only 10 feet away. And where is it? It's right there. There, there it is. You could be. Ah, oh, now you can see it a little bit better. Oh, let me get, let me zoom out there. There you go, you can actually see it now. Right there. I don't know how I spotted that either. I'm just looking really hard for the match to the big guy and, uh, What the heck? Ah, oh, mountain lion track. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I can't, I cannot answer how he got in there. <laughs> so again, guys, I'm still right in that same area. Yeah, it's a four point, look at that. Yep, four point hard white. I'm still in that same spot, straight above that really super hard hit area. So, don't let it discourage you guys, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, very cool. Little ragger, but he's in great shape. Might almost still go brown because uh, he's been under this stuff for a year all right all right guys we got another one uh, oh man uh, this canopy that i'm under right now i mean that's and yeah <laughs> i don't know what this guy was thinking coming down this there you go. Woo -dee -dee. Yeah, it's definitely uh, last year's shed, but uh, not a single micro crack on him because he was so well covered. So this guy will still go brownie. Yay! Adding more brown to the pack. Love that. All right, guys. We're going to keep looking for this uh, the big guy's match. I'm hoping it's not all the way down the hill somewhere. I zigzagged my way up here, though. I'm sure I might have seen it if I was, if it was down that way. But it's probably on the uh, the west-facing slope. Um, oh, another tip for you guys: uh, west-facing slopes. That's where I find most of my antlers. I mean, the majority of my antlers. The west-facing slopes. Uh, just barely into the snow because obviously the west facing slopes are going to have the most snow on them um, and the north facing too but uh, on those west facing slopes uh, they like to hang out right inside the edge of the snow uh, they'll go in and out of the snow um, so those sides of the ridges are usually where I'm finding most of my antlers so and it's pretty much uh, consistent so far for like the last three years I think so, uh, yeah, I'm sticking with it. <laughs> All right, guys, till the next one. You know it. Again, the lions are not the bad guys here, okay? So don't go killing lions just because of this. It's the people who were at fault.